Today, I'm gonna to be making some wall art, and this is gonna be the biggest single piece of art I've made in my entire life. And I need to find a place to hang it in this tiny little apartment that I have, because there ain't much room left. <laughs> now, before we start chopping up any bits of wood, we need to talk about inspiration, because ideas just don't come out of nowhere. This project has roots with one of the greatest artists who's ever graced the internet with their work, and that artist is Bobby Duke Arts. Oh. <laughs> His videos are hilarious, his videos are phenomenal, his videos are skillful, uh, he's incredible. And he made a video two years ago where he essentially laminated up a bunch of wood and then carved it himself into this way that resembled like a curled and rippled sheet. It was absolutely gorgeous. And while I don't have the tools, the space, the mind, or the skill that Bobby has, well, I do have SolidWorks and a laser cutter. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my own take on freezing time with a rippled surface and then immortalize it in birch plywood. Specifically, I'm gonna use uh, <laughs> this wood. This is uh, some birch plywood that I got from Craft Closet and it's a uh, quarter inch thick and it's really good stuff. Honestly, I cannot recommend Craft Closet enough because they have really good quality stuff and uh, the shipping time is super quick. I ordered this on a Saturday and it showed up on Wednesday. I mean, pfft. all right, let's take a look at this stuff. Whoa. Oh God. Uh. Okay, so this is the plywood and it is beautiful. 10 sheets a piece and these look great. Absolutely great. And just to be clear, this isn't sponsored. I just freaking love their stuff <laughs> and I'll be honest. While I am cutting the wood today, I did already finish the design and prepare all the cutting files, but I did that because I wanted to spend more undivided the time with you. So I'll show you just a snippet of what the design was and we'll go from there. I used SolidWorks to create a rippled surface based off of a series of sketches that I made. I extruded that into a solid volume and then I started hacking it up into different cross sections, both vertical and horizontal, to create a series of cuts that I could make on my Glowforge. And then of course I stuck in a bunch of assembly and hanging details such that this thing's gonna work in the real world once it's all assembled. I exported all of these cross sections with DXF files and imported them into Inkscape so that I could do layouts of the actual cut files themselves because I'll be able to fit more than one of these cross sections on each sheet of plywood so I'm gonna need to kind of part pack them in an intelligent way. We got to be material conscious here. We can't just go willy-nilly cutting all the plywood. We want to save material as well. And so now that you're all cut up, it's laser time. So, small update, the Glowforge right over here is laser cutting the 12th and last quarter inch thick sheet. And I still have to do a couple others on some eighth inch stuff, but we are getting near to the end and you can probably tell from my crazy hair and everything, I am just, I'm, I'm getting tired, <laughs> but I'm glad we're nearly done. Welcome to the floor of my office. This is where I get a lot of my assembly done. It's a nice big flat surface, <laughs> uh, but we're done with the laser cutting. So everything is piled up here all 14 sheets of plywood. Took the majority of a day, but um, it, it all came out great. Each one of these pieces is holding in them some little secrets that I put it into the design that um, are really gonna help me out. And uh, I want to share them with you because they might help you out on some of your projects. So the first of these secrets has to do with these pieces. Uh, they're all on top of the pile. Any of the ones that you see that have these notches in it, those are the backbone. There's five of them, five strips of wood that go across the entire length of the piece and they provide the strength in one of the directions of the artwork. But but the problem is, is that they're really long and they don't fit inside my laser cutter. My Glowforge can only cut basically up to 475 millimeters long. So I had to chop each backbone up into three separate pieces. By chopping them up, I've essentially created breakpoints, but I offset each of these breakpoints. So for the five backbones, no uh, two breakpoints ever line up, which is great because if you were to try to take the finished piece of art and fold it in half, yeah, it'd be easy to break one of the backbones at its weak point, but you'd have to fracture four other pieces of straight plywood. And overall, this constitutes uh, a work of art that's going to be strong enough to support its own weight uh, and any load you're going to throw at it. And the other thing too, at each of these breakpoints, I put a little shape in them. So this one has a triangle, this one has two triangles, there's circles and squares, but essentially it allows me to have a little puzzle piece mark. If I ever jumble up the pieces and I don't know which one is which, I know exactly which two are gonna go together. The secret that I didn't tell you actually, when I was showing you the craft closet plywood earlier, it's actually pre-finished. So it costs a little bit more up front, but it's already sanded and it's already lacquered. 
it's smooth, it's lustrous. Honestly, I'm not gonna have to do very many finishing steps after the assembly is completed. I'm really excited that I get to focus on the steps that I love most and am most equipped to do in my space right now. I mentioned it earlier that I'm gonna be assembling this kind of like Lego, which is maybe a bit of a lie. It's a little bit more like Lincoln Logs. All these pieces, they have these notches in them. And so I can actually slot two pieces together and have them get connected. It's super convenient. It was easy for the laser cutter to cut and it should be pretty rigid. These are actually two test pieces and you'll notice there's a lot of looseness in this connection. And that's because in this design, each gap here on the computer was a quarter inch thick. This is quarter inch plywood. The problem is the plywood isn't actually a quarter inch thick. It's actually, instead of 0.25 inches, it's 0.23 inches thick. And when you laser cut it, there's a slight kerf to the laser. That's essentially the laser beam is removing a little bit more material than you want it to. And so the width of this gap is actually, instead of 0.25, it's 0.26 inches. All of these pieces were modified prior to me cutting so that the gaps are the same. I actually set the laser cutter to cut notches that are 0.22 inches thick. The kerf added a little bit. So now each gap is 0.23 inches wide. So now with the real pieces, if I were to take them and slot them together, now it's a rigid connection. There's no play in the joint. So now I've shared with you all the secrets of the design and I really wanna start putting this thing together. So let's get to it. If you liked what you saw here, please consider subscribing to see more of my custom art projects that I do on this channel. And uh, some of them I will make files available. This one, I'm not fully 100% satisfied with the design to make it available for sale, but maybe in the future.